Welcome to Gap Church International. Happy Mother's Day. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord? Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Come on and wave at your neighbor and let them know you're glad to be in the number. Glad to be alive. Glad to see each and every person here on this morning. Come on, we're going to lift up the name of the Lord together. Hallelujah. Happy Mother's Day. Y'all ready to give God some praise? Y'all ready to worship God? How many of you know that we have problems sometimes? How many of you know that no matter what comes on, we can go to God in prayer? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Makes no difference. Lord, it 
Well, come on, if you can go to God in prayer and give God a praise right there. Come on, you ought to know something about going to God in prayer. Come on, choir, if we can go to God in prayer, we ought to be able to give God a praise. And when we go to God in prayer, we know that God will work it out. Oh, I don't have nobody who believes today, but, but God will work it out. God will work it out. Why will God work it out? Can we say it again? Go ahead. I tell you, he can work it out. He can work it out. Come on and give God a praise. Come on and give God a praise. Come on, if you've been praying about anything, go ahead and give God a praise. If you know that your prayers have already been answered, go ahead and give God a praise. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that before I can get my prayer out of my mouth, that God has already heard me. And not only has God heard me, but God will give me what I prayed for. If you believe you're gonna have what you prayed for, go ahead and give God a praise. Oh, come on in here. Praise God like it's already done. Give God a praise like it's already done. If you know that God has already heard your prayers, and on this Mother's Day, that God is about to give you what you've been praying for, then go ahead and give God a praise in advance. Woo! Come on and give God a praise in advance. Come on and give God a praise in advance. Some of you pray for your loved ones to be saved. Give God a praise in advance. Some of you pray to be delivered. Give God a praise in advance. Some of you pray that God will get you out of debt. Give God a praise in advance. Some of you have prayed. Give God a praise. Woo, well, don't let her praise him by herself. Don't let her praise him by herself. She just see God answering her prayers. If you see God answering your prayers, you will give God a praise too. Woo, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. See, grandmother said he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. Can I tell somebody in here that God's getting ready to answer your prayer and it wasn't when you wanted him to answer it, but God says it's going to be right on time. Well, praise the name of the Lord. Good morning, Gap Nation. Good morning, Gap Nation. What a wonderful morning it is to greet you in the master's name of Jesus our Christ. We've come here to exalt the name of Jesus. And let me begin by just saying happy Mother's Day to all the wonderful mothers in here. Happy Mother's Day in here. We thank God for you being in the presence of the Lord today and in the house of God today. Happy Mother's Day to every mother in here. We thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. We thank God for our own mother, the mother of this house. Amen. In the person of Pastor Harriet Porter Genuine. Come on, help me praise God for the woman of God. Happy Mother's Day to you. And we honor also the man of God, the bishop of the house, our apostle, Apostle A.L. Genuine. Come on, help me praise God for the leader. But this one's for Jesus Christ. Throw your head back and shout glory! Glory, 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 glory. If you're watching us on Facebook, please don't forget to like, tag, and share. If you're watching us on YouTube, please don't forget to subscribe. Amen. Well, it's word time. We're getting ready to move out your way. We're going to have another selection from this awesome women's choir. And the next voice you will hear will be that of our bishop, Bishop Anthony L. Jim Wright. We're going to all stand as he mounts the pulpit. Amen. Amen. God is the joy and the strength of my life. He moves all pain, misery, and strife. He promised to keep me, never to leave me, never ever come short of his word. I've got to fast and pray, stay in the narrow way. Keep
keep my life clean every day because I want to go with him when he comes back. I've come too far and I'll never turn back because God is, oh yes, God is. Do you believe that God is? Oh yes, he is. God is. Oh, God is my own. Yeah. Oh. Come on, let's say it together. God is the joy and the strength of my life. God is the joy. God is the joy and the strength of my life. He moves all pain, misery, and strife. He promised. He promised to keep me, never to leave me. Never.
Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you and we praise you on this wonderful day for being our all in all. We thank you for giving us another chance to experience life. You've been good to us. The truth of the matter is you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And for this we say thank you, Lord. Now, Father, we ask that you forgive us of our sins and blot out every one of our transgressions. Create in every one of us a clean heart and renew within us a right spirit. Lord, I'm asking that you would order our steps in your word. Lead and guide us in the way that you'd have us to go. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us today. I pray, Lord, that you would save somebody, deliver somebody, set somebody free. Call somebody on this Mother's Day to leave out of here better than they came. And Father, we are not uh, naive to the fact that when your people gather together, the enemy has a tendency to show up. But today we bind him in the name of Jesus. We rebuke the forces of the devil. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. And the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus is against you now. We render you helpless and defeated. And we give God the glory in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, Lord, I ask that you would use me for your glory. Think with my mind, speak with my tongue. Let no flesh be on parade, but Jesus, you be exalted. Do whatever you want to do. Do whatever you want to do in the name of Jesus. And God, we won't take no credit, but we'll say to God be the glory for the great things he has done. We say yes to your will and yes to your way. In Jesus' name, we love you, Lord. Thank you now. And we praise your name. Hallelujah. God is... Yeah, God is Oh, God is my all Oh, is my all My all God is Everybody said, come on God is God is Without God, I could do nothing. Hallelujah. Without Him, I, I would fail. Glory to God. Without Him, my life would be rugged. Like a ship without a sail. I just heard that ringing in my spirit. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop there because I feel something slipping up on me. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and tell them I can't do nothing without him. I can do nothing without him. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you today. Heaven smile upon you. Let's praise God for this wonderful women's choir this morning that has blessed us tremendously. Come on, y'all can clap better than that. Come on, let's thank God for them. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. 
What a wonderful display of the blessings of the Lord in this place today. And we're just so grateful for this Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to every mother, to every woman in the house. God be praised for you. We're just so grateful to God for the manifold blessings that he has bestowed upon all of us. And certainly we want to say Happy Mother's Day to our virtual viewers today. Thank you for tuning in to the worship experience here at the Gap Church International. If you are live streaming on Facebook, please take a moment to like and share. We ask that you would do that like and share. And if you're watching on our YouTube channel, that's Gap Nation CLT TV, we ask that you would take the moment to like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. You would help us tremendously by doing so. We want you to be involved in the worship experience and go on and set that, you know, uh, 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 that uh, channel on fire, set Facebook on fire with your emojis and your hallelujah and your shout praises, whatever you do, just go on and do it. Just light it up, light it up in the name of Jesus. We're just so grateful. And again, I am, I want to say to all of you that are visiting with us today, we're just so happy that you are here sharing in the Gap Church International. And uh, of course, we will acknowledge you a little later further on. But for the time that is ours, uh, right quickly now, we just want you to know that we are so blessed by your presence. And you're in the right place at the right time. And we want you to celebrate Jesus with us because he has been just that good. Amen. I'm also happy today to see one of my sons, Pastor Franklin Clark. Hallelujah is in this building today. Hallelujah. Good to see you. Pastor, it's good to see you. If you want to come up closer, you can. You are so welcome. We're just so happy to see you here today with us. I'm telling you, you have just done my heart great good. And God bless you for being here. And I'm happy also to see members of our family here today. Uh, God bless every one of you. And uh, we know that uh, much blessings will be upon you as you continue uh, to do the Lord's biddings. Uh, for all of you that are worshiping today with your mothers that are here today, we thank God for you. And uh, we just, you know, God bless all of you. Happy Mother's Day again to our First Lady and to our pastor, Pastor Harriet Porter Jen Wright. Amen. There's none like her. Am I telling it, Gap? Amen. She's the real deal. And so we thank God for her being here and being our mother in this house. And we're just so grateful for the blessings of the Lord. Uh, that's pouring out on her life all right now my brothers and sisters I want you if you will to turn in your Bibles to two passages of scripture uh, first we want to revisit now Isaiah chapter 43 and then we're going to flip backwards to 1st Samuel chapter 1 Amen. Isaiah 43. And uh, we're going to read in Isaiah 43, verse 26. Isaiah 43, verse 26. If you're there, say amen. All right. I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Word of the Lord. Follow me along in yours. Isaiah 43, verse 26, here in the reading of the verse. Put me in remembrance. Let us contend together. State your case that you may be acquitted. Now hold your finger there and let's flip backwards now to 1 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 19. 
1 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 19. Hallelujah. This is what the word of the Lord says in 1 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 19. Then they rose early in the morning and worshiped before the Lord and returned and came to their house of Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah his wife and the Lord remembered her. Verse 27 says, For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted me my petition, which I ask of him. Mm. All right. Come on and let's talk about what's on your mind. Contend with me. You got a problem? State your case. Let's chop it up. That you may be acquitted and the Lord remembered her for this child I prayed and the Lord has granted me my petition which I asked of him I want to pray, preach today with your prayers and certainly with the aid of the Holy Spirit. I want to talk about once again an unbreakable promise through unleashed faith, part two. Look your neighbor in the face, repeat after me, say neighbor. <clears throat> Bishop is getting ready to talk about an unbreakable promise through unleashed faith, part two. Neighbor, if God made you a promise, it's unbreakable. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, as we honor, celebrate, and reflect on this Mother's Day, there is nothing that can compare to the love, strength, and enduring faith of a mother. Whether they are biological, adoptive, or even spiritual, mothers are a true blessing from the Lord. And although everyone's experience with their mother or mother figure is different, had it not been for your birth from that mother, you would not be here today. And many of us have had mothers who persevered and pushed through many dark moments. And there's a few of you current mothers that can attest to that also that sometimes you feel as though you have to fight for what strength you have left in order to make it through another day. And it doesn't matter whether you're a single mother or not. Without having unleashed faith, you would surely crack under pressure. And when you find yourself facing these moments, you have to do, as I said in the message last week, You've got to speak what God promised. You don't have to relegate yourself to defeat when you have an omnipotent God whose promises are unbreakable. 
Uh, you see, man can and will turn away on you and renege their agreement, but God can't turn back on his word. God won't change his mind. He won't entice you with it to only keep it from you. If he said it, he's going to do it. And you can take that to the bank. He is a promise keeper. Now I need some mama in here today, some woman in here today to lift your hands right there and shout, yes he is, yes he is. He's going to do exactly what he said. Uh, well, uh, let me try it over here on this side of the room. God is going to do exactly what he said. Did y'all hear me over there? Let me try it over here. God is going to do exactly what he said. Now grab you somebody and agree with them and tell them uh, he's going to do what he said. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And you've heard me say it before. And it may sound like a broken record to some of you. But you've heard me say it over and over. That a delay is not God's denial. He just has it on pause for a moment. And I've come to recognize that sometimes the longer the delay, the bigger the blessing will be. Come on now and get tough and look at somebody and say, I got some big stuff coming. Said with conviction, I got some big stuff coming. Uh, yes, uh, yes, the, the blessings of God are big. They, they exceed uh, your imagination because you do know we're still talking about guaranteed greater unleashed and it takes massive faith to birth such a massive miracle and it's in the moments of postponement that God calls for us to remain steadfast confident consistent and persistent in communication with him in our prayer life in the fortification of our unleashed faith because if we don't let me tell you the enemy will manipulate these moments to convince us to feel abandoned disregarded or even left out of what God promised the enemy will twist our emotions to make us look funny at other folk getting their guaranteed greater then take out our anxiety against God the audacity of you ah, the nerve of some of us and I said that that's what God was referring to in Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 22. Now, if you were not here, you got to go back and pull up the message from last week because I spent time now uh, exegeting the history behind that text. And so I'm not going to spend time today. You should have been here uh, uh, to go back and do that. But now let me suffice to say that in Isaiah 43 and 22, the people had become so disillusioned that they took out their feelings against God. They became weary of him. Uh, they had the nerve to stop talking to God. Uh, they, they, they put God on mute. Uh, yeah, they, they iced 
God. Uh, uh, you, you stop speaking to the one who is the giver of all things. Yeah, you 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 quit talking to the one who is the source and your provider, and you decided to close your mouth on the one holding the keys to your promise. No matter how desolate and dismal you may be feeling, you better open your mouth and start declaring. No matter how frustrated you get, you better speak what God promised you. I know the enemy is trying uh, uh, to make you hush and be silent. And he wants you uh, to become enamored uh, with all of life issues uh, uh, that's hitting you from every which way. Uh, but in the midst of your craziness, you better muster up enough strength and open up your mouth and say, God, I still thank you. And that is exactly, that is exactly what we see in 1 Samuel chapter 1. It's a familiar passage that tells of the plight and the baby mama drama between Hannah and Penila, who was the second wife of Hannah's husband, Elkanah. Are you with me yet? And without going too deep into this saga, we remember that Hannah was barren. In fact, verse 6 in the King James Version says, The Lord had closed Hannah's womb, but Peninnah was able to conceive by Elkaniah multiple times. Uh, Peninnah was just popping babies after babies out. Not becoming a mother grieved Hannah tremendously. And as if that wasn't bad enough, here comes Ratchet Penila, uh, taunting and making fun of and humiliating Hannah for not having children. And yes, we give Penila a lot of uh, flack for her cruelty towards Hannah. Uh, but the sister girl had a little wind in her jaw uh, because we discover in verse 4 of 1 Samuel that whenever Elkanah and his family would go up to Shiloh, uh, the place of peace, to offer their sacrifices unto the Lord, there was no peace in the room because uh, uh, Penila noticed that Hannah would receive a double portion of meat to give as the sacrifice. She noticed uh, uh, that Hannah was getting more than what she got. Now, isn't that something? Penila has what Hannah is longing for. But Hannah has the promise of favor that Penila can never receive. Lord, that ought to help somebody right there. Instead of you getting fixated on what you see others have, uh, you better keep your focus on the guaranteed greater unleash that's waiting to be manifested through your unleashed faith to almighty God. Uh, yeah, take your eyes off what other folk got and go to thanking God that is well with you as it is. Uh, lift your hands and tell God thank you right there. And Hannah, the Bible says, prayed. And Hannah prayed persistently. Hannah prayed through her anger with God. She prayed through her deep sadness and depression. She prayed through her refusal to eat or drink. Hannah prayed. 
And each time she prayed with intensity and more focus on her promise. And she prayed with such deep emotion, such unmatched power, that although her mouth was moving, her voice could not be heard. She was praying straight from the depths of her heart, weeping and mouth forming words, but nothing audible to the point that the priest Eli saw her and mistaken her to be drunk and he rebuked her right there in church. That's why you got to be careful now. How you rebuke folk. Uh, yeah. Hannah assured Eli that she was not drunk, but only brokenhearted and speaking directly to God from her heart and soul. Eli empathized with Hannah and told her, Woman of God, go in peace. God will grant you your requests. And after all those years of coming back and forth to Shiloh, the place of peace, and being tormented, God finally granted Hannah her peace. The Lord kept his promise spoken to Hannah from Eli the priest. For in verse 19, it says, the Lord remembered her. And Hannah gave birth to Samuel. Now don't miss that. The Lord, Rochelle, remembered her. If you don't hear nothing else, Rhonda, you better grab this. The Lord remembered her. To one I'm trying to drive something home here. The Lord remembered her. I'm waiting on some of y'all to say the Lord remember me. Now, listen. What if Hannah had walked away from her strong faith? What if she had Wasted her words on nappy head Penila. Because y'all know how some of y'all would do. Jerk your neck and say, You don't know who you're talking to. What if she had wasted her words on her and not speak to her promise? Hannah's womb was closed. She couldn't see in the natural how what she longed for would come to pass. But Hannah knew she served the supernatural God who is able to surpass all things in the natural. He's the God of an unbreakable promise. He isn't asking you to figure it out. He's not putting the logistics on you. All he wants us to do is believe. Now let me just tell you, stop wasting time speaking to the noise and begin speaking to what God has promised you. Quit wasting your time dealing with negative comments and begin speaking positive word that has your miracle wrapped up in it. Open your mouth and declare, God, I will speak what you promise. Oh, come on here. I need somebody to break the spirit of apprehension off of you and declare, I will speak what you promise 
Now I just need five or ten of y'all that show not believe that if you would just seal it with your praise right here. Open up your mouth and put a praise over it right there. Come on, put fear in the enemy's camp and seal your promise with a praise. Seal it with a praise. When we fully understand that our guaranteed greater is God's unbreakable promise through our unleashed faith, we will, we must not only, as I shared last Sunday, speak what God promised, but now we must, here we go now, we must get this, have bold confidence in God's promise. Repeat this. I must have bold confidence in God's promise. Say it till you remember it. Say, I must have bold confidence in God's promise. Yes, now, now Abraham comes to mind here as one having bold confidence in God's promise. According to Romans chapter 4 and verses 20 through 22, uh, uh, the word says, Abraham, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. Uh -huh. Open your mouth and say, God's going to do this thing. We also, we also see, we also see bold confidence in God's promise was displayed in the life of David. Uh, uh, the Lord promised David, you got to get this now. The Lord promised David that one of his descendants, Elder Laws, would always be on the throne of Israel. And some 23 years after the death of David, his son Solomon was elevated upon the throne. Uh, he started off, Solomon now, started off doing good and received the favor of the Lord. But then Solomon started slipping and making poor choices. His flesh got the best of him, leading him to marry the wrong women and worshiping uh, their idols. This stirred the fury of God and he spoke to Solomon and said, Solomon, because of the wrongs that you've done in my sight, I would normally take the kingdom away from you, but I will not do it for the sake of your father, David. Are y'all hearing me? The Lord was reprimanding Solomon. He was saying to him, Solomon, you knew better. And really, you don't even deserve mercy. You're all over the place. Just as loose as you can be. But I made a promise to your father. And I am a God who keeps my promises even to a dead man. Now, now here it is. Here it is some 300 years later. Some 300 years later, King Hezekiah, another of David's descendants, had come upon the throne and was in great danger. King Zennacherib of Assyria sent his army to attack Jerusalem and conquer the city. It appeared as though the people were doomed. There was no recourse, no way out. Oh, but that night, that night, that night, while the enemy was assured that this was a slam dunk win for them, God sent an angel who decimated took out 185,000 Assyrian soldiers. King Hezekiah and all of his people 
were spared. And no doubt, after he pulled himself together, Hezekiah was speechless. And he wondered, God, I want to ask, what did we do to deserve your kindness? And the Lord said to Hezekiah, Hezekiah, this ain't about what you've done. It's for the sake of my servant, David. David's been sleeping in the grave for 300 years. But I made him a promise that one of his descendants would always be on the throne. And I'm a God of my word. I keep my promise forever. Oh, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I'm trying to keep from shouting, but I feel a shout coming on. When we fully understand that our guaranteed greater is God's unbreakable promise through our unleashed faith, we will have bold confidence in God's promise. It doesn't matter how long we have been waiting for a promise to be fulfilled. Don't you give up. Don't you throw in the towel. Don't you walk away because your time is coming. I'm going to pull on somebody and tell them, hold on. It's coming after a while. Listen, brothers and sisters, if God, if God will go to great lengths and degrees to keep his promise to a dead man, how much more will he keep his promise to you? My God, what you got to do is stay in faith. Have bold confidence in God. Don't cast away your confidence in God's promise because uh, it is going to be rewarded. Uh, that promise is going to pay off. The Lord is going to show out and he's about to show off in somebody's life right now. That's why the hymn writer said, standing on the promises that cannot fail. When the hollowing storms of doubt and fear assail, by the living word of God, I shall prevail. Standing on the promises of God. And then Milton Brunson picked it up when he wrote that song. He said, I'm standing on the promises of Jesus. And I believe that he will do just what he said. No more doubts and disbelief causing my faith to decrease all the more. But Milton Brunson said, I'll take him at his word. I'll trust and never doubt. I'll stand upon his promises. For in the time of trouble, he will bring me out. Well, maybe some of y'all can't get with that. But some of the old folk can help me preach now. Just keep on praying. For the Lord is nigh. Just keep on praying. He'll hear your cry. Manifesting in your life. Open up your mouth and give him praise right there. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Break it up on your roll and give God a scream right where you are. Hey! You got to have bold confidence in God's promise. I don't care what you've been going through, Sister Jessica. You shall live and not he cannot say you shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. I need somebody to open your mouth and scream, live, live, live. Oh, go it, go it, go it. Finally, finally, this is the last thing I want to tell you. Finally. And happy Mother's Day again to all of y'all. Finally, when we fully understand that our guarantee greater is God's unspeakable, unbreakable promise through our unleashed faith, I told you we must speak what God promised. 
Just point at somebody, not disrespectfully, but just point at somebody and tell them, don't you give up. You're about to come into it. Mm, you just helped somebody right there. You just helped somebody right there. I said, you just helped somebody right there. Oh, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. When we fully understand that our guarantee greater is God's unbreakable promise through our unleashed faith, we must first of all speak what God promised, have bold confidence in God's promise, and lastly, here it is, then we must remind God of his promise. Come on, it's not being disrespectful to God. Open your mouth say, God, I'm going to remind you of what you promised me. Uh-huh. Now look now. Look, now here we go, Elder Donald. We go. I think it, it, it's worth our just looking uh, into the book of Exodus. Just, just for a moment. I, you know, without any, without any theological discourse, or, I trying to do no exegetical, you know, uh, miming. I, I just want, I just want to just look at it. In, in, in Exodus, while Moses was on Mount Sinai receiving the Ten Commandments, he left his brother Aaron to watch over the children of Israel. It has been 40 days now that Moses has been away and the people uh, have become restless. And they have become a little antsy and, and irritable concerning the absence of their leader. And got us out here and done left us what we supposed to do. They said to Aaron, we don't know where Moses is and whether or not he's ever going to come back. Now I tell you what you need to do. Make us a God out of gold that we may worship. Aaron had them to bring him their jewelry. Give me them ear bobs. Bring me that necklace. G give me your toe ring and your, your finger rings. Yeah, g g g g g g g G give me that, give me that ear bob out your nose. Snatch that ring out of your nostrils. Come on, bring, 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 bring it to me now, now, now. Go behind the tent and, and bring me that gold uh, piercing that you have in your private areas. Since you want a God, since, since, since you, since you want a God, come on, let, I need all of your gold. And so, and so they, here they come now. Here they come. Here they come. Bringing him all of their gold. And he molded and molded it. And he said, out jumped a golden calf. Lord, help us now. This once again angered God. It angered God to the degree that God decided to wipe all of them out and spare only Moses. 
But I want y'all to come here, Elder Marsha, and notice something here in Exodus 32. The word says, Moses pleaded with God, saying, God, remember what you promised. That the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob would be as numerous as the stars in heaven. And that they would possess the land forever. This is what you said, God. And then it says, God changed his mind and did not bring the disaster that he had threatened to pray tell. What happened? God just said, I'm going to kill every one of them. But after Moses got through talking to him, the Bible says, God changed his mind. What happened? I tell you what happened. Moses reminded God of his promise. If Moses, Halima, if Moses had not said, God, you promised, the Lord would have destroyed all of them. But because Moses said, you promised. I'm going somewhere with this. Brothers and sisters, that's how powerful it is when we remind God of what he promised. Just maybe, just maybe there are blessings that haven't been released because we're not putting God in remembrance of his promises. Uh, uh, we are fasting and we're praying for him to do this, that, and the other. We're asking him to turn this around and turn that around. And that's all well and good. I ain't berating you for that. Go ahead and keep doing it. But when we say, God, you promise. That takes it to another level. Something powerful and miraculous begins to happen. The sovereign creator of the universe uh, goes to work on our behalf. Uh, God, you promise. Uh, chains are broken. God you promise demonic forces are destroyed God you promise impossible situations are made possible God you promise when we remind God of his promise nothing can stand against him bringing that thing to pass Ah, God you promise it is so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise and to know thus said the Lord Jesus how I trust him how I prove him o'er and o'er Jesus precious Jesus oh for grace to trust him more God you promise uh, listen to what the Lord said uh, uh, in Genesis 28 and verse 15 uh, and here's a powerful verse that you need to put uh, in your uh, 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 res in your directory you need to put it in your archives you need to keep it where you can pull it up when you need it in Genesis 28 and 15 this is what it says God says this I will be with you constantly until I have finished giving you everything I can drop the mic on that did you hear what God said God says, I will be with you constantly until <laughs> I have finished giving you everything I promise you. Open your mouth and say, I ain't in it by myself. 
Uh -huh. And now I need some of y'all that can handle this apostolically. Some of you that can handle this in the Holy Ghost. Open up your mouth and say, everything God promised me, he's going to bring it to pass. Because he said so. I love him. I love him. I love him. He said, I am not going to leave you. I don't care who walked out of your life. I don't care who left you for dead. Mama, I don't care how he walked out and left you to raise that family by yourself. You are not by yourself because God says, I'm going to be with you and I'm going to bring to pass everything that I promise you with him or without him. I don't know why y'all ain't happy over there. Somebody ought to be swinging from the chandeliers right there to know that it ain't over for me. God's going to get me up out of this debt. It ain't over for me. God's going to turn this thing around. I ain't going to struggle like I've been struggling because God says he's going to be with me until he brings to pass everything he promised me. Now the question becomes... Do you know what he promised you? Are you clear on what he promised you? I need I need y'all to I need y'all women to high five three other women three other uh, ladies and tell them sister girl hang in there because everything God promised us he's gonna bring it to pass. Tell them, don't you quit. Don't you give up. There's a turning that's about to happen. Hey, glory to God. Throw your head back, everybody in the room, and say, glory, glory, glory. Come on, I need to hear some glory in here. Say, glory, glory, glory. Everything that I promise you, God said, is on the way healing is on the way restoration is on the way freedom is on the way yeah uh, godly connections are on the way promotion is on the way opportunities are on the way businesses are on the way debt free living is on the way vindication is on the way assigned blessings are on the way new doors are opening on the way promises are being solved it's on the way dreams are coming to pass is on the way your ladder shall be greater than your former is on the way you shall recover all is on the way stop all your mourning and stop all your crying it's time for you to receive the oil of gladness I said it's time for you to put on a garment of praise it's time for you to lose yourself and have a hallelujah fit over what's on the way you ain't got to wait until somebody else prays him before you start praying him but you ought to grab it like the old folk and say when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me my soul cries hallelujah I thank God for saving me brothers and sisters our guaranteed great is God's unbreakable promise through our unleashed faith we got to speak what God promised have bold confidence in what God promised and remind him of his promise Jesus 
you told me that you're going to make me the head and not the tail. Jesus, you promised me that you were going to make ways out of no ways. Jesus, you promised me that you would be a bridge over troubled waters. Jesus, you promised me that you would be a company keeper. And since you promised what you're going to do, I'm going to stand here and wait until I see the salvation of the Lord. He that promised is faithful. I love the hymn of the church. Y'all know I am a subscriber to hymnology because in every hymn there is a message and I close this sermon by quoting the hymn standing on the promises of Christ my King through eternal ages let his praise ring glory in the highest I will shout and sing standing on the promises of God standing on the promises that cannot fail when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail by the living word of God I shall prevail standing on the promises of God standing on the promises I cannot fall listening every moment to the Spirit's call resting in my Savior as my all in all standing on the promises of God standing 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 on the promises of Christ my Savior I'm standing on the promises of God I don't know about y'all but I'm gonna stand on every word that he promised I know from time to time the enemy comes against what has been promised you the devil trying to get you the second guess God he's trying to confuse you and make you believe that you didn't hear what you heard he's trying to convince you that it will never happen in your lifetime but I've come to counteract every lie from the devil's camp and to declare unto you that everything God promised you it shall come to pass everything that God said shall come to pass I know you're reeling I know you're rocking but after you get through steady your steps because God is about to pull this thing off pull on your neighbor and say oh neighbor God is about to pull it off say oh neighbor God is gonna show himself faithful come on say oh neighbor God is gonna bless you real good and say neighbor you ain't got to wait till you praise him before you praise him you ain't got to wait until you see it before you praise him you ain't got to wait until you get it before you praise him but praise him in advance praise him in advance for what he's about to do put your hands together and praise him like you know you already got it hey. 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 praise him oh come on if you got a promise out there 
give him glory. Woo. I said, if you got a promise out there, give him glory in advance. Now, this may not be for everybody, but I'm looking for somebody who got some big promises that you know that nobody can pull this off but God. Where are you? Where are you? You can't do it. You don't know how. But if this thing is to come to pass, God's going to have to do it. I need you to hook up with somebody else who know that God has got to pull this off and grab him and say, come on here. Let's praise him for what he's going to do on our behalf hey let's pray them promise that the Lord has made you is on the way it's going to happen you may not see it <laughs> but it's gonna come to pass Open your mouth and say, it's already done. Close your 
glory to God. Hallelujah. I said it's already done. Hallelujah. Oh, 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 oh. Hey. Come on, y'all. Come on. Now just look at somebody and tell me, it's happening right now, it's happening right now. While I'm up in here, it's happening right now. Say it with conviction, while I'm up in here, it's happening right now. up in here is happening right now I wouldn't miss it if I were you I wouldn't miss it if I were you I wouldn't miss it if I were you I said I wouldn't miss it if I were you don't stand there looking at other folk praising him if you can't do nothing but just leap up and down, you need to do something to show that you believe that every promise is on the way. That God is a man that he cannot lie. He's the son of man. He has nothing to repent. If he's talking, he will do it. If he said it, he's going to bring it to pass. Praise him if you believe it.
That's right, that's right. Give him glory. Give him glory, give him honor. What he promised you, he's gonna bring it to pass. Some of y'all are right on the edge of a fulfilled promise. That's why you've been experiencing so much controversy. That's why so much hell has broken loose in your life. That's why the enemy has turned up the heat because you are just about there. And so since he turned up the heat, you need to turn up the praise. Hey, hurry up, come. I said you need to turn up your praise. Hallelujah. Because your praise is your weapon. Are you hearing me? I said your praise is your weapon. He knows that when you get the praise in God, Things begin to move. Angels go to work at God's direction on your behalf. Glory to God. You ain't going out like that. You are the righteousness of God. You are an heir of salvation. You've been purchased by God. You born of his spirit. And you've been washed in his blood. And that's why we're going to, as I make ready to do this invitation, we're going to do standing on the promises of Christ my King. Through eternal ages, let his praises ring glory in the highest. I will shout and sing because I'm standing on the promises of God and I want to speak to those that are watching me live streaming right now at this moment I want you to know that God loves you and that you are special to him as a matter of fact this message was also tailored for you the Lord knows you and he knows everything about you. Listen. He has sent me here to tell you that he has longed for you to give him an opportunity to become Lord and Savior of your life. And you've been putting it off because you've been saying that you ain't good enough, that you ain't ready, that you still got some stuff in you that ain't right. Well, let me tell you something. All of us got some stuff in us that's not right. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Just because you have made mistakes, just because you're still out there doing this, that, or the other, that does not erase the fact that our God through Jesus Christ is a forgiving Lord. And the very moment you say to him, Lord, forgive me of my sins and come into my life. I make you my Lord and Savior. Listen, he will do whatever it takes to get to you in order to change your life and to cause you to become a new creature in him brother i'm telling you today is your day sister i'm telling you today is your day whoever listens to me if you don't know jesus today is your day for him to come into your life and cause you to become a new creature in him and if you're ready to do so i'm ready to lead you right now into the saving grace of the lord jesus christ 
And wherever you are, in your kitchen, in your living room, your bedroom, wherever you are, if you would just pause just for a few moments now and pray this prayer along with me. And we're going to pray this prayer in here because we want you to know that you are not praying this prayer by yourself. So if you can bow wherever you are, if you can close your eyes very well, if you can't, then it's okay. But we're going to bow our heads, we're going to close our eyes, and we're going to pray out loud so that you can know we're praying with you. Let's pray, saints. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner, and I confess that I cannot save myself. Today, I accept you as Lord and Savior of my life come into my life forgive me of my sins I receive you now I believe that you came into the world that you lived you died you rose from the dead and you're coming back again to receive me unto yourself if I believe this and I do that's the gospel and by the gospel I am saved thank you Lord I am saved I am born again I'm a new creature in Christ today all things have become new hallelujah 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 well if you prayed that prayer we believe with our heart that you are born again right now let us be the first to welcome you to the family of God. Let us be the first to welcome you to the body of Christ. Come on, we clap our hands and we welcome those virtual saved people today. Listen, the very next thing you need to do is get into a spirit-filled church. Get into a church where the word of God is taught and preached in an uncompromised manner. If you're in Charlotte or close by and you need a church home, you need a place where you can pull in and begin to grow and develop in the Lord, we welcome you to the Gap Church International right here, 6100 Oil Road, Charlotte, North Carolina. We will be more than delighted to partner with you and to help you on your new journey in Christ Jesus. Listen, we want to know your conviction today and on the front of the screen, is our information how you can get in touch with the gap church if you want to call us call us we will respond back to you yes we will all we need you to do is make that effort god bless you today and welcome to life eternally with christ jesus we clap our hands and we salute you today is our prayer listen listen we will be right back on next week to share with you continuously the word of the Lord and I believe with my whole heart that God between now and then is going to show himself mighty in your life this is your opportunity give him a chance he loves you and we do too come on let's clap our hands for them Praise God, it's offering time. Yes, it's offering time. Now is the time for us to bring back unto the Lord the honest tithe, the offering, and even the seed. The Bible is clear. Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse, so that there might be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. Will I not open unto you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there will not be room to receive? And I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. Look how specific the Lord is. He knows where we are. He knows what we have given and he knows how to bless us. I know that there are many of you who can testify to the fact that the Lord has blessed you beyond measure. So why hold back on him now? Why shortchange him now? I encourage you, Gap Church International, and those of you who have been blessed by our ministry via live stream, to be honest with God as it relates to the giving 
the tithe, the offering, and even the seed. You can give by way of Cash App, Giblify, PayPal, or you can call the church and make your transaction that way. The important thing is to be found giving. And I want to encourage you now to give willingly and cheerfully. Thank you so much for all that you have done and all that you are going to do. Your giving enables the Gap Church to do what the Lord has called us to do. So I want to thank you in advance for being liberal in your giving. Come on now and let's give.